How's everybody doing today? Thought I would do a little space. I had some free time to catch everybody up on what we know from Andrew Tate and Tristan Tate's second case in Romania. We have since uh, been able to get our hands on a document from the Bucharest court. It's uh, almost 100 pages, and it details what they know up to this point, and it summarizes what's going on with some of the victims, what's going on with some of the charges, et cetera. And we have the, some of the uh, judicial information as to why Andrew was put under house arrest. So we're going to get through some of that a little bit later. But first, let's do a recap, bring everybody up to speed. For those of you who don't know uh, <laughs> what's going on, there's always people who are just stumbling onto my account for the first time. So there is a first Romanian case the brothers have already been indicted for that. The trial was approved. However, the Tate brothers did file an appeal. They do not want to go to trial. And there's going to be a uh, decision on that hopefully next month. It's going to be heard in front of the court of appeal. The charges on that for Andrew are for human trafficking, rape, and forming an organized criminal group. Tristan has charges of human trafficking, incitement of violence and forming an organized criminal group. There are seven victims in the first case, and contrary to what the Tate brothers and their entire PR team have been telling everyone, five out of those seven victims have given statements against the brothers, and four of those victims are going to trial as injured parties. So they will go to uh, trial uh, and testify against the brothers in court as an injured party. Now there's a second case in Romania. And a lot of people think that the second case has something to do with the fact that the Tate brothers were on Candace Owens' podcast, or they've been uh, speaking out against uh, what's happening in Palestine, or they've been speaking badly about Jews, etc. None of that is true. We've known about the second case since they were indicted on the first case. We knew about it because in the indictment that took uh, that happened in June of 2023. It mentions an entire list of offenses that were disjoined from the first case and put into a second investigation that has since become the second case. The reason they did this is because once they put them under, if you remember, they put them under preventative, uh, preventive detention and they were under house arrest and judicial control, et cetera. So the time uh, before they went on judicial control, which is similar to bail, but without the financial requirements, they had 180 days from the time that they originally put them under a preventive measure, which is preventive detention. And that went all the way through the, to the end of their house arrest. They had 180 days to charge them or to set them free. So they indicted them on the charges that they were ready to go to trial on at that time. Everything else that was under investigation got disjoined, and that is now the second case that you're seeing. Okay, so what, here's what we know about the second case. And by the way, I, I will be bringing people up. So if you have questions or comments, then go ahead and raise your hand and I'll bring people up in the order uh, that I see them here on my end. So the second case, we know that uh, Andrew has a charge of forming an organized criminal group, which is similar to the first one, human trafficking and continued form. He has six victims in this second case. And out of those six victims, five of them Decott is alleging he used what's called the lover boy method of human trafficking, where he lured them, they essentially lured them into ex, uh, sexual exploitation, commercial sex work, through the idea that they were going to be in a romantic relationship with him. So five out of the six were lured that way, according to Dicott. He's also getting charged with trafficking in minors. One of the victims is 17 years old. We will get to her a little bit later. He's also being charged with sexual intercourse with a minor, with a victim who is 15 years old. We'll get into some of her details a little bit later as well. There's also influencing statements, which is essentially witness tampering. This happens if you try to intimidate or bribe or pressure a victim or a witness into not cooperating with the police. And there are multiple of victims and witnesses who they tried to intimidate, bribe, or pressure to not cooperate with the police or to lie to the authorities on their behalf. So they're picking up additional charges for that. And of course, money laundering as well. Money laundering is going to be a big one. Pax, I saw your message, and I don't know if you meant, I just sent you an invite. I don't know if you meant you have to wait an hour, an hour and a half, or if you can come out now and you only get an hour and a half, but I sent you the invite nonetheless. 
Tristan Pate is being charged with forming an organized criminal group. He's also being charged with human trafficking in continued form. And the reason it's why it's uh, in continued form is because it happened over a period of time and happened more than once. And here's the thing. He has 28 victims. 28 victims in the second case, which is a staggering, staggering number. He also has influencing statements. We know that he was putting pressure on one of the witnesses to not go to a mandatory hearing with DCOT. So he's getting uh, influencing statements as well, which is witness tampering and also money laundering. Now, in the new case, we know there's a total of 35 victims already labeled as, as uh, victims in one classification or the other, and two of them are underage. However, we recently found out that there's at least a dozen more possible victims that are under investigation. So they could add at least 12 more victims to this 35 victim count for the second case. And that would, it's between 12 and 14, uh, the, there's kind of a little bit of confusion in the file here, but that means if, if they do get added to the case officially, that's going to bring the victim count to this case. The second case alone is to somewhere between 47 and 49 victims, which is a staggering number. Currently, without those numbers, there are 49 victims across all of their cases, which would be the Romanian first case, the Romanian second case, a UK criminal case for human trafficking and rape where the brothers will both be extradited for whenever Romania is finished with them, and a UK civil case for rape where four victims are alleging that Andrew specifically raped them. So between all of them, there's currently 49 victims. If these new uh, alleged victims that are currently being investigated get added to the second case, it's going to bring their victim count up to 61, at least 61, which is a mind-boggling number uh, in terms of potential women who have been uh, trafficked or, or abused or exploited in some way by these guys. Absolutely mind-boggling. Okay, so I, I made some notes out of the document. I'm just kind of going to go through them, and there's no order of importance here. I'm just going to address some of the notes. So just as I was reading through the documents, I jotted down some notes. And again, there's no order of importance here. There's no weight to any of this. So regarding the trafficking in minors charge, we know, and there was huge uh, misinformation and propaganda that was pushed out by the Tate's team on this. Uh, this is from a victim named Vivian, a.k.a. Cobra Baby. She was Andrew's girlfriend for a very, very long time, and her age has been confirmed both by the government in Romania, her home country, witnesses, and chat messages that have come off devices. She was 17 years old, according to DCOT, when Andrew started exploiting her in 2014. So it is confirmed that Vivian was underage, and in 2014, she was 17 years old. This has been confirmed. Whatever the propaganda is coming out from the Tate camp, this, is, this has been confirmed by two governments. That's why he's being prosecuted for trafficking of minors, because they've been able to confirm her age. Now, the bizarre part about all of this is if she was 17 in 2014, some of you might remember that there was a quite infamous video that got released of Andrew beating a woman with a belt. Some of you might remember that. It came out many years ago, and allegedly that's what, well, he claims that's what got him kicked off the Big Brother TV show, is that this video leaked of him smacking a woman across the face and beating her with a belt. And the woman came forward and said that it was just kink and it was how they played around, etc. At that time, at that particular time, Andrew told the media that that video was filmed in 2012. Now, the girl in that video was Vivian. So if Vivian was 17 in 2014, which has been confirmed, then that means in 2012, when that video was allegedly shot, she would have been probably 15. Depending on where the dates fall, she might have even been 14, which is really disturbing. So confirmed age, uh, 17 years old in 2014. Uh, we also know that Andrew is specifically under house arrest now because of the sex with minors charge. And we can get to that a little bit later. Uh, he went to court today to see if he was going to be under house arrest for another 30 days. 
he's going to get this reviewed every 30 days until they get indicted uh, for this second case. So the first time they the judge put him in for 30 days, they went in today and it was postponed until Monday. So we should get a, some sort of a decision on Monday what's going to happen with that. But it is specifically because of the sex with minors charge. Now, moving on to her, uh, the sex with the minors charge is for a 15-year-old child. Uh, her age has been confirmed as well. And what happened to her has been corroborated by multiple witnesses and a telephone conversation. They had uh, wiretaps and they have multiple witnesses to what happened to this 15 years old. And I'm going to read a clean version out of the document of what happened to her. There's some pretty disturbing chats from that conversation that I'm not going to read, but I'll give you the clean version. It says, uh, sexual acts with a minor in continued form. And I'm going to be redacting some of this in real time, so apologies if I'm stumbling through it. Without being able to establish the number of material acts, which means how many times they did it, um, and punished by Article 220, etc., cetera, to some legalese, uh, consisting that Andrew Tate, starting from a particular date in 2020, being at the home address, which was him address, or at a complex at another address where he had rented an apartment for the victim, repeatedly had sexual intercourse and anal and oral sexual acts with the victim, knowing that she was 15 years old, knowing that she was 15 years old. Now, that's the clean version. And without reading the chat messages, uh, and I'm not going to read the chat messages because she's saying something about what happened to her when she was under, when she was a minor. And without her permission, I don't feel comfortable putting that information out there. But I can summarize it and say that according to her and according to Decott, he very violently anally raped her and choked her unconscious as a 15-year-old child. So I'll, I'll put that out there for uh, the clean version. Now, uh, Decott and the minor is also alleging that he bribed her. They're stating that he offered her 5,000 euros to go to Decott and lie on his behalf so he would look good. And he also bought her a phone, a new phone, and told her to take the new phone to Decott and leave her normal phone behind because he knew they would take the data off the phone. However, he goofed because he offered her 5,000 euros and he only paid her half. And I guess that upset her. I don't, I don't know what the details is, but they know. Uh, she, she knows, Decott knows that he offered her 5,000 uh, and he only paid her half. And the same victim, uh, the 15-year-old, is also testifying against him uh, going to trial. So he's going to have a 15-year-old. Well, she was 15 at the time. So he's going to have someone who was 15 years old at the time who was essentially violently, anally raped. And he tried to bribe her uh, silence. Uh, she's going to testify against him in, in court. He's, if that plays out the way that it sounds like it's going to play out, um, he's he's done. Okay, we also know that most of the girls in the second case, there were a couple of girls who made some money. For example, Vivian, uh, the first victim that I mentioned who started with him at 17 years old, Decott says that they were able to track down over a million dollars, over a million dollars plus tokens that she was able to make. And essentially she gave it all to him. And the fact that they've got the token number, and we, we saw this in the previous case as well in the documents, OnlyFans was cooperating with the authorities in the first case. So I can only assume that they're cooperating with them in the second case. And the webcam company would be cooperating with them as well, which was called My Free Cams. So besides a couple of the girls, we know that most of them only made a few hundred dollars or a few thousand dollars at most. So this notion uh, that Tate's girls were all millionaires and making tons of money and are having a great life uh, with Tate and their life was better off with Tate, that's been verified as being false. Yes, a couple of them did, but the majority of them did not. We also know that so far out of the 35 victims, that seven of the victims in this case are considered injured parties and will be testifying on behalf of the prosecution. So seven in this case so far and four in the first case. This number could change as the investigation goes on. Uh, between today and the time that they actually go to trial, that can increase or, or decrease. Uh, we know that there's at least four people 
and I believe they're they're either victims or witnesses. They may be charged with perjury because they were caught lying to Decot, trying to cover for the Tate brothers. So there's at least four people, uh, victims and witnesses, who may be charged with perjury as well. We also know that for influencing statements, there's a total of four people in the second case that were pressured to give false statements to Decot or to not attend mandatory hearings. And as I mentioned earlier, Tristan uh, specifically pre pressured one of those witnesses to not attend a mandatory hearing. Uh, let's see here. We also know that the judge says that most of the accusations are well-founded and he declined putting them in jail. Decott wanted to put them in jail for 30 days, but the judge declined putting them in jail partly because the human trafficking and organized crime allegations were already used for preventive measures in the previous case, and the Tates, for the most part, uh, had adhered to those measures. So the judge recognized that they were already under a preventive measure of judicial control and didn't see that it was necessary to put them back in jail. However, due to the sex with minors uh, accusation with Andrew, that did get him put back in house arrest for 30 days. Their accomplice, Luana, Luana Radu, who is a former police officer, she actually has the least amount of charges again in the new case, and she's only being accused of being complicit in human trafficking with three victims. She's not under a new preventive measure in the new case because the judge said that she's already under judicial control in the first case, in the first case which is sufficient. So in the first case, she has the least amount of charges, and in the second case, she has the least amount of charges as well. So surprise, surprise, she's a former police officer. Not surprised uh, with that at all. And, and by the way, if anybody wants to come up, uh, feel free. Just go ahead and, and um, raise your hand. I'm going to bring some people up now. I'm going to continue reading, but I'm also going to bring some people up if you want to have a conversation or ask some questions about this. Uh, so what else do we know here? Uh, let's see here. I'm going to read some things directly from directly from the document here. So we know with uh, sexual intercourse with a minor, it says, with regard to the crime of sexual intercourse with a minor held against the defendant, Andrew Tate, the judge in Rights and Liberties finds that the administered evidence leads to the reasonable suspicion that it was committed by the defendant. Thus, the cooperation of the statements of the injured person, who's heard as a witness, with the statements of uh, two different witnesses, uh, they're redacted here, it follows that the defendant, knowing that the said victim was 15 years old, had normal and anal sexual relationships with this. Um, the veracity of the aspects related by the persons heard and relinquished by the prosecutor in support of the accusations is also given by the minutes of telephone conversations uh, made by the victim on a particular date with a female person, who I will not name, uh, including describes a part of the criminal activity. The victim making repeated reference to sexual abuse, and they put sexual abuse in quotes, to which she was subjected to uh, being a minor. We know, we're going to go on here and mention, I'm going to read something here from influencing statements. Regarding the crime of influencing statements attributed to the defendant, Andrew Tate, in relation to the injured party, redacted the name, the judge in Rights and Liberties finds that the evidence supports the reasonable suspicion that he attempted to persuade her through bribery to give statements inconsistent with the truth in front of DCOT prosecutors, promising her, promising her the sum of 5,000 euros in exchange for help, uh, and then he actually handed over the sum of 2,500 euros. This is evidence by the cooperation of the victim's statement with the conversations between her and the defendant through WhatsApp application. So not only do they have the, the victim's statement regarding that he tried to bribe her, they also have the chat messages um, from the devices where he tried to bribe her as well. So this is not one of those scenarios where she's making the claim without additional information. They actually have the chat messages as well. Uh, Ra is it Rosa or Raza? It's Rosa. Hey, Hi, Rosa. Uh, I'm speaking from the UK. Hey. Hey, it's my first time on one of these threads, but I've been watching, I've been really following uh, the Andrew Tate case since 2022, just before he was arrested. Um, and I couldn't 
it was just when he was cancelled I couldn't understand why people were still following this guy and praising him and he seemed to blow up and I thought straight away there's there's a cult like um there's a cult like misogyny mm -hmm. to him and I just watched his interviews and could see the narcissism just pouring out of him the reason why he uh the reason why he is still everywhere and giving his point of view and thinking he's going to win this is because his narcissism will not allow him to believe that anybody is going to take control of him yeah i, I agree i agree I, I i think both of them are raging raging narcissists yeah. um, and i think it comes from their father as well and also in psychologically in this way um when when children grow up in an abusive home where they see the father being abusive and then the mother who's supposed to be the nurturer um not being able to stop the father they can't naturally be angry at the um the abuser because they have to survive as children but they can be angry at the nurturer who isn't being abusive because they haven't protected them from that initial abuse. So that's where I think their woman hate and misogyny comes from. Their mother didn't or couldn't protect, protect them from their father. So that brings around uh, um, feelings and insecurities around women and a brokenness towards women. And I think it's been absolutely fascinating. And I think his time's coming his all his chickens are coming home to roost and if this if this is all true with that, that statement from the victim i mean it's just pure evil and that's another thing i'm a huge believer in god and the fact that he is trying to use faith to get out of this as well it's just that's just another level of uh disingenuous and and uh another level of con man really and i hope he gets what's coming to him yeah you know i i hope there's justice i hope there's justice whatever that means but i'll, I'll add a, a personal spin on top of that and say that if half of what i've read in these files are true and i have no reason to think that they're not true because a lot of it came directly off of the devices the, you know whatsapp conversations and, and all of that uh it, it just half of that turns out to be accurate i I don't believe these two guys are fit to live among society. I, I think they need to be incarcerated for a very, very, very long time um, based on. Yeah, they're just they're they're not fit to live uh, among mm. society. I mean, we see here in the second case. Uh, so in, in the first all the documents from the first case, you know, they give us some ideas and summarize what's happening with some of the girls and the victims rather. Uh, but in this one, we get them, uh, we get them more of a glimpse into, uh, they're mentioning things about uh, how these victims have pre-existing psychological traumas, or they were taken advantage of um, due to like a lack of resources, lack of family support, deaths in the family. So you have these guys who were preying upon these these victims in true vulnerable situations. Uh, you know, women who are already dealing with traumas and deaths in the families and depression uh, and things like that. And those, you know, that's what they were preying on. They were looking for that type of of woman and it's those sorts of things are mentioned in these documents where we didn't get that the first time around as much uh, and it just it makes me that much more angry uh at how these guys could do this um you know and, and they they bring this up a lot because in the first case it will just say things like you know psychological coercion etc but they get very you know specific in this and they, they'll say like emotional blackmail you know emotional blackmail uh, lack of material resources, lack of family support, pre-existing psychological uh, traumas, uh, depression, anxiety. So they're going, they're really ticking all these boxes here for the type of uh, victims that they were uh, trying to recruit. And it's, it's, it's uh, yeah, it's, it's classic predatory behavior. Yeah. Yeah. Very much so. I'm very, very psychopathic in the way that they, can look at people, not just women either. I mean, let's look like they openly talk about how they uh, manipulate men as well and how they see 
brokies and losers and the rest of us down here. Like they have no problem using people's pawns. They have no problem getting what they want out of people, whether that's money or control. And people shouldn't, it's, I've actually um, tried to watch a couple of emergency meetings and it did feel very like sort of hypnotic and um, very cult-like. It's definitely some kind of brainwashing going on there. And it's just very bad, bad news all around. And uh, I'm just so glad that uh, I'm just so glad that some of these victims have are now feeling strong enough to come forward, because God knows how many there really is. Yeah, you know, as, as you were speaking, I was just scrolling through this document, and you, you know, when you're reading something and you're just kind of scrolling around or you're flipping the pages and your eyes just happen to land on something, mm-hmm. uh, my eyes just happened to land on this while you were speaking. It, there's a mention here. It says um, one of the victims here was the existence of an unwanted pregnancy and the existence of a state of disturbance following the termination of the pregnancy. So I, I, I don't know if they, if they kind of scooped her up while she was mm. kind of recovering from the emotional trauma of having an abortion. Yeah, but, yeah they seem know. to zero in any vulnerability and they'll know yeah. what to say and they'll know what to do and I just these girls are very young I remember seeing his first videos and people were saying oh you know it's only fans they're adult women blah 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 blah. and I'd be like these women look really young and the way that he can just sort of use his hand signals to direct them to what he wants them to do it's it's very wrong and it's classic predatory and uh yeah I think he's I hope he really gets what's coming to him and his brother yeah, it's very predatory. I mean, we know the youngest one here is 15 years old. Uh, but on average, I would say, you know, most of them are 18, 19 years old. Uh, that's, you know. Throttling a 15-year-old girl, like. Yeah. That's. Unconscious. Yeah, yeah unconscious. unconscious. While, why, uh, and again, I have to say allegedly here, but there's chat messages here and, and wiretap conversations. Uh, but according to this, while he was anally raping her, uh, throttling her unconscious as a 15-year-old child. Oh, come on, like people who are still listening to this man, like this is, yeah, this is it's time. It's time for all this to come out now, and people start seeing the reality. This is a horrendous reality. I can I say something, Crayon? Hey, Suzanne, nice to hear. Can you hear? How are you doing? Yeah, of course. Thank Hi. you. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Um, well. After hearing that about the anal raping, my basically my question is, I what's the difference between indicted and charged? So it, I'm I'm a bit confused. So Romania is incredibly a confusing situation. So when they go through the process, they you know they raid them, they take them into the police station, and they charge them. But the indictment is a formalization of that charge. It, it's an indictment is going to. Uh, formalize the end of the investigation and says, okay, we are ready to go to trial. Everything is locked up. The investigation is finished. These are the final charges. This is everything. It's finalized. We're going to trial. This is the 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 state saying we're ready to go to trial. You know, you said that this on the second indictment, you the they're going to be a lot more serious. Surely they'll have enough um reasons to keep them in remand them on the second indictment. Surely. Well Again, when it comes to preventive measures, right, so you've got the preventive detention, which could be jail time, you've got house arrest, and you have judicial control. One thing that Romania has is they, like, you really have to have a significant reason to restrict someone, to restrict someone's freedom. Because, you know, even though, you know, most people who cure, you know, things like, you know, raping a 15-year-old child anally, and you're like, oh, yeah, you know, put them in jail. They, they, you know, the Romanian constitution, you know, they're protected by rights there. They're the accused and they're, you know, they're given the presumption of innocence. So Romania has to balance their freedom because they haven't been convicted yet. So they have to balance their freedom while at the same time saying, okay, well, we have to stop these guys from committing more crimes or from fleeing the country, et cetera, Um, because they catch them. Right, they catch them while they were under a previous preventive measure from the first case. They've caught them trying to influencing or influence statements by trying to bribe them and intimidate them to not cooperating with the police. They caught them trying to bribe politicians. They caught them 
um, trying to launder more money. So they continue to commit crimes, but it's not enough to put them back in jail. So I, I don't see a scenario but unless they, they really screw up to where they would go back in jail. I, I think they're going to flee. I really think they're going to flee. I really cannot see them sticking around to when they when they have when they're presented with the second indictment and everything's out in the public, especially if they that rape thing, they're going to flee. They're not going to hang around. Yeah, I, uh, I I tend to agree with you. I I, I would flee. I, you know, I, I think anyone in here, if you have the means and you're facing twenty to thirty years in a Romanian prison. And you have the means to run, knowing knowing that you committed the crimes. I mean, I, I, I here's here's the thing, especially when it comes to children. And you know, I don't know how they do it in Romania, but in most Western countries, people who are convicted of hurting children don't do very well in prison. So if no. he's convicted of this with the 15 year old uh, for what he did to her, I can't imagine that's gonna uh, like. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's fucked. He's, fucked. he's proper fucked. <laughs> he's fucked. Yeah, he's he, he's proper <laughs> fucked. And, I, and I, I can read this to you here regarding um, why they thought or, or why they didn't go back to jail. So let me read this quote here. It says, without denying, therefore, the concrete gravity of the alleged crimes as shown in the previous arguments, the judge notes first that the criminal group was dismantled by prosecutors in December 29th, 2022. What that means is, and we've been saying this the entire time based on information that we've had and the evidence that we've seen, these guys were fully involved in all of this until they were finally arrested in December, 2022. They didn't quit making yeah. pornography. That never ended. No, nope. They were forced nope. to quit. No, nope. I've said this. Yeah, they were forced to quit. Yeah, I said this, I said this. Yeah. How many times have I said 100%. this? So it's only when Deacon comes. Yeah, I've yeah. said it a thousand yeah, times. So it says the judge notes that in the first criminal group was dismantled by prosecutors uh, December 29, 2022, with the defendants being subjected from that moment to preventive measures of uh, depriving of liberty whose intensity has reduced over nine months. Currently, all four defendants being under preventive measures in, under judicial control. Thus, contrary to the prosecutor's arguments, who mentioned that the defendants left Romanian territory when they continued criminal activity, the judge finds that since the moment the organized criminal group was dismantled, no new crimes of human trafficking or minor trafficking have been committed by the defendants with no indication that they left the country. So they, essentially what... They didn't have a chance, did right, they? So essentially what they're saying is um, everything that they were doing in terms of human trafficking, which is you know the, the, the seriousness of, uh, of this case... Everything regarding human trafficking ended when they were arrested in December 2022. So had they had been, uh, had they had done more trafficking or had they had trafficked a minor after that time, they would be sitting in jail right now because it's a very serious crime. But yeah, because it happened before, yeah. the judge's um, ruling on that is that it happened previously and it, we put an end to it. So we're not going to punish them for that. But I, yeah, listen, listen, in, in my mind, if you rape a 15 year old or if you rape anyone, but let's just focus on the minor. Yeah. If you are anally raping a 15 year old child and choking her unconscious, oh. you are not fit. You sick. are not fit to be in society. Oh. And he's, he's yeah. under house arrest. I feel sick. Yeah. I feel sick. Yeah. Oh my God. That which another question. Why do so many people believe him? It is. I, it, it blows my head. I don't understand. Why do so many people fucking believe him? Because he is a great manipulator. He's a great, I, I, he's undefeated when it comes to social media and media manipulation. He's a master at this. And he very early, he, is, he, is. he very early got on board and had Tucker Carlson and Candace Owens and Patrick Bet David and everyone else with a large platform. Yeah. Covered his ass. Covered his ass. And by doing that, they built a foundation. <laughs> And that foundation of lies became the new narrative. Here, here's the thing, Suzanne. Uh, the only thing that really matters, right? My opinion doesn't matter. Your opinion doesn't matter. Everyone listening, or their opinions doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is they're going to stand in front of a judge eventually. And that judge is going to come to the conclusion uh, of what they did. Yeah. And they're, I don't see a scenario in where they don't go to prison. 
unless unless there are significant procedural errors where they're able to get them out on a technicality. I don't see another scenario where they're not going to prison for a significant amount of time. Okay. I mean, there's, I mean, right now, there's in the second case alone, there's 35 victims, 35 victims in the second case alone, seven in the first case. I mean, that's in Romania. That's in Romania. Yeah. That's only Romania. Yep. That's in, that's in Romania. Yep. Yeah. And in, in Britain, in the UK? Three that we know of. We know of three. Right. Okay. Yeah. So total across all their cases, 49 victims currently 49 victims across oh, all their cases. However, in the second document, they mentioned at least a dozen more possible victims that they're investigating right now. So if they're added to the case, it's going to raise their case or their victim count up to 61. I mean, that's... I guarantee there's a hundred more out oh, there. Yeah. There's definitely more, more out there. Well, yeah, well, we know from the UK civil rape case that's happening, we know um, through interviews with the law firm that's representing those victims that they've they talked to multiple other women who have the same story who allege that he raped them they just don't want to come out they don't want to go public they don't want to be part of it so yeah there's absolutely more victims they just don't want to uh they don't want to be known they don't want to be hassled you know there are victims already who have been dip, dip, who have already they're in hiding yeah they probably want to get on with the lives that they've had to rebuild after meeting him yeah um, I mean, I mean, you know, and, and again, I, I'm a man, so I'm not trying to mansplain anything. But I, I, from my point of view, I would imagine that that for a lot of these uh, survivors, let's just call them survivors, it would re-traumatize them, a lot of them, um, to have to, to go through this again. It might be easier for some of them just to move forward. And uh, a lot of girls would probably have never told anybody, ever. So they might be in, have families or you know, in, in relationships and they've never even told anybody what's happened to them. So let alone go and report it. And then, like you say, go through the trials of they will be victim blamed. They will be put through uh, state in, impact statements again. Maybe if Andrew and Tristan find out they've been talking, they will undergo threats and stalking because we know that they do that. And it just could be like, you know, they just can't, they can't do it. They can't come forward. And it's more, it's always so much more than who actually comes forward. There'll always be more victims out there, always, for any perpetrator. Yes. Yeah, there's always going to be more. And for those of you listening, because I, people come at me almost daily with this saying that, oh, it's just all these women falsely accusing them. They're out for a payday. So when it comes to human trafficking, um, I'm just going to focus on the Romanian case here. This isn't a scenario where all of these women called the police for help and said, well, we've been trafficked. We'd like to file a report. That isn't what happened. Uh, the law enforcement agency in Romania, they're called DCOT. They handle human trafficking, drug trafficking, terrorism, et cetera. Through an investigation, they identified all of these victims of human trafficking. Only after the victims were identified uh, as possible human trafficking victims due to evidence, then they took the statements from those victims. And of course, uh, you know, some of the victims are going to, you know, try to protect their brothers. Some of the victims aren't even going to realize that they've been trafficked. Uh, and as we found out now, some of them were told uh, to lie on their behalf, but only after they were identified did they actually give their statement. So this is not a scenario where all these women gave false testimony to the authorities to try to, you know, get rid of the brothers, right? And I see there's so much misinformation and ridiculous, for, you know, just for example, the Jews are not paying these women to bring the brothers down, okay? <laughs> I, somebody may bring that up almost, almost daily on my account, you know. Yeah, that didn't happen. DCOT through a very thorough investigation and a lot of the a lot of the evidence that they have has come directly off of their own computers and off of their phones, off of the devices, off the victims' devices, the witnesses' devices, and off the defendants' devices. Andrews, Tristan's, uh, Georgiana, Luana's, off their computers, etc. That's going to be really difficult evidence to fight in court, especially when it comes to chat logs where you are very clearly um, talking about how you don't give people passwords and how you're going to kick someone out of the house or how you're going to assault someone. And then someone actually gets assaulted 
And, and through the entire thing, you know, I'm just scrolling through the document here. They refer to these women, and, and, you know, and going back to the, well, they were running a legal webcam business or legal OnlyFans business. They, they were not. It was not a legal business. That's why they were in trouble. There's a legal way to run OnlyFans and my free cam or webcam and, and OnlyFans. And there's an illegal way. If you are manipulating someone to work in pornography, that's the illegal way. According to DCOT, they were not paying taxes on any of the money that they were making. They didn't have contracts with all of these women, proper contracts. So they weren't running a legal business entity in any capacity. And when you look through some of the the, the chat messages here, they don't address them as normal employees. They call them whores and sluts. Um, just to give you, I'm just going to skim through some of these. Um, Tristan says, I need to gather all my whores in one place so they're easy to manage. Those girls are crazy whores. So I want to discuss my plan with the whores. Um, the new girls I have, the new girls I have, I wouldn't trust any of these um, whores on OnlyFans. It goes on. It, so how did my whores move? The whores are only for work. Um, but I have to get back to Romania to be a pimp for some whores. I'm fed up with these ungrateful whores. Like this is how they communicate. Um, Andrew says, do we do we take the whores back and leave them at the hotel? These stupid whores think they're too good to be associated with anything. To hell with these whores. I'll sort it out somewhere. Feed those stupid sluts. Why? Like that's how they address them. Like th these are not employees. Well, why didn't they? Why didn't they do it legally? It doesn't. Why they could have? They could have had a successful webcam business and done it all legally. Didn't have to like manipulate girls from abroad. They could have done it all. They could have got them contracts. They could have paid them. I, I've seen documentaries on where there's legal um, ch chat studios over there. I don't understand why they had to do it all underhand. For the same reason why he didn't pay the 15-year-old the full amount when he offered to pay her 5,000 euros to lie to Decot. It's, it's built into their DNA to cheat people. That's why. It's the same reason why there's an entire Forex uh, thread where they're talking about how the Tate brothers ripped them off on a Forex scam. You know, there's an entire, like, that's, this is what they do. <laughs> they're just shitty people. You know, they could have done it the legal way, but, you know, to yeah. be fair, they're, they're, the brothers do talk about, they used to hire a bunch of women to work for them and they had people trying to manage the women and they said it was a headache. Then they figured out that if they figured out that they could control the women, if they could get the women to fall in love with them, if they could have sex right, with the women, right. make the women fall in love with them, then it was easier to get them to, to control right. the women. And, and based on what I've oh. seen, it looks like almost all of the women here are all, uh, you know, victims of, uh, they believe that they were going to be in a romantic relationship with them. So I think that's where things fell apart. I think they may have started doing things in a somewhat legal way, somewhat, not completely, but somewhat legal way. But then once they've tried to figure out how they could control them more to take, to take more of their money, if not all of their money, you know, some of the girls gave all of their money to them. And, and another thing, you know, Talisman Enterprise, their company, yeah. that was um, down as being in debt. Yeah. Do, have you read that? Yes. That the, yeah. I, I don't get that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they, they weren't running you know, a legal operation. So the whole argument of, well, they were running a legal webcam studio. It, it falls apart really quickly. According to DCOT, they weren't paying taxes. They didn't have model contracts. They didn't have proper employees. Um, the people were not being paid fairly. They were not being treated fairly. Some people weren't getting paid at all. Some people were physically assaulted. They were threatened with violence. At least one of the victims was threatened with rape. She was threatened to be raped, impregnated, and locked in a house if she didn't obey. And there's chat messages of this so directly sad. off his device. So, so sad. Yeah. So sad. Yeah. You know, like the, the, you mentioned earlier, like how these guys have fans and the first case was bad enough. There's a lot of information in the first case we haven't released yet either. We're waiting for the trial to get locked in. The trial was ordered, but Tate appealed that decision as it was his right. But once it gets locked in, we're going to release some more information on that as well. But it was, it was already bad enough knowing some of the details of the first case and seeing that these have, they have such diehard fans still. But now after going through the second case and seeing some of these details about raping a 15-year-old 
and 35 of these women, and you know, a lot of them were suffering from different um, psychological traumas, deaths in the family, et cetera. I'm at the point now where I'm just thinking, you know, I, I just don't have the, I don't have the, um, word I'm looking for. I, I don't have the empathy towards the fans anymore before. I'm just like, okay, well, yeah, you've been lied to. And you know, if you catch me on a good day, I still might say that. But after reading through all of this, I just say, I haven't got the patience. Yeah. I'm just, I've got no patience. I'm either. out of patience now. I'm just like, you guys are supporting, yeah. you guys are supporting career criminals, psychological, you know, just yeah. abusers and predators. And I just, um, yeah, it, it, it's tough. This this second case, that this document that I've read through has completely, uh, it was a little bit soul crushing to read through it. And it's kind of changed how I interact with their fans after going through this, because I just, I don't have the patience for it anymore. Um, now, let, let me be very clear. If somebody has genuine questions and like, how, why the, how, how does it work this way? Why does it work this way? I don't I, I'll answer that all day long. What I'm talking about is the people who st they're still coming in saying, oh, there's no victims. What yeah. are the victims' names? You don't know the victims' names. They don't exist. Yeah. They're totally innocent. He's being set up by Romania. Like, okay, just buy, blocked. I think I've blocked five, at least yeah. 500 people in the past week alone. You know, all, all, all trolls. Yeah, same yeah. here. Same here. Uh, TC, you've had your hand up patiently. Thank you. What's up? Hello. Can hey, you hear me? Loud and clear. <laughs> How you doing? Uh, nice. Um, I was just going to say, um, someone earlier that was talking about, you know, Andrew's uh, misogyny and how it's like, you know, being like ingrained into him. It was like I listened to a podcast not so long ago, only a, like a brief clip. And somebody said to him, um, what's one thing that your mother taught you? And he couldn't even name anything to, that his mother helped him in his life. And to think about this, this is a single mother, by the way. His own father wasn't in the country and she was looking after him yet he couldn't even say one good thing about his mother. And I think it, that whole thing of him being ingrained in misogyny is been with him for his entire life. And all the people now who have been, who can't admit that they've been fooled by him. Um, it's like the old saying, um, it's harder to, it's easier to fool somebody than to tell them they've all been fooled. And all of these podcasters now, they've all been fooled. And now it's, you can see that the reluctance to even talk about it now, because it's, it's hard to even to admit. Yeah. Uh, I was reading something while you were were speaking. Uh, again, my as I'm scrolling through the document, I caught this. Uh, I, we mentioned the donations uh, just a moment ago, uh, really quick. Uh, there's a conversation here between Tristan, Andrew, and someone else who is a new player. I'm not going to mention their name. But it says, uh, Tristan says, so shut up until they arrest me because of you. You can't get angry and start writing to me that I did illegal things so I can have problems like Alex Bodie. And for those of you who don't know, Alex Bodie is a friend of theirs. He got caught up in human trafficking and drugs and a murder, Kate, like terrible, terrible human being. Then Andrew says, uh, and if there's chances that'll come for us too at some point, but we have black money, it will raise suspicions. Now this other person says, I fucking told you not to get caught pimping. When you get caught for pimping, at least make it look good like you have an NGO to get a suspended sentence. So this person told them to have an NGO uh, to get a suspended sentence. And these guys opened up Kate Pledge to do all their donations. So per the, uh, per the recommendation of this particular person, uh, they opened up their Kate Pledge with hopes to get a, a suspended sentence or a reduced sentence. Uh, Anthony, go ahead. My question is, the Lada, did, do you know if he, Tristan, bought that just for the hell of it? Or it, was that genuinely like their only personal car and just die caught seized it? I don't know. So what we know in regards to cars, hold on one second. We know that there are a group of cars that were seized when they were arrested recently. We know that. I put that list out. It wasn't a full list. Oh, hey, Dots, let me bring you up. Hold on one second. I'd like to co-host. Got to bring my co-host up. Uh, it wasn't a full list, but it listed through the cars. We, we had the document. We had the seizure order. And this is where I'm a little bit confused. So we, I, I have a copy of the document of the seizure order that says all the cars that were to be seized. However more cars ended up getting seized. So I don't know if there was a second order 
that came out that I didn't get my hands on that. Um, but I don't have anything where they were told to seize the LADA. That doesn't mean that they didn't have an order to do it. It's just the document that I have, the LADA wasn't on it. But we have in the document here, the brothers are being accused of. So there's a, there's a larger money laundering offense for them where they allegedly launder all the money that they've made through their criminal activity. But there's a smaller additional money laundering uh, allegation that happened uh, that took place allegedly uh, this year where they were, per I think they purchased four cars uh, in other people's names trying to launder money. And one of them's a Lamborghini, one of them's a Ferrari. Uh, actually, there's a Lamborghini and two Ferraris and an Audi, I believe, an Audi. Did they put uh, them under the names of their friends and their security guard? We'll eventually find out who owns everything. And I, I have to wonder, I honestly have to wonder, because these guys have said so many things publicly. They've said that DCOT has, has fabricated evidence. They've said that the prosecutors are trying to steal their assets. They're saying they're making up all these lies about people in Romania. I wouldn't be surprised if they took the Lada and some of these other, they even took the motorcycle. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they took some of this stuff um, just, just to be difficult, just to make them prove uh, that it was purchased with legal funds. Of course, I'm speculating on that. But one thing that is going to happen with this second seizure, they will get an opportunity to prove that those assets were purchased with money that did not come from their um, anything related to the charges. Now, in the indictment, it does, or I'm sorry, this document, it does say that they have a contract with Rumble that's worth 9 million euros, a 9 million euro contract with Rumble. Uh, I'm going to guess that started in 2023. They don't show the contract. They just mention the contract and how much it's for. So I'm going to take a guess that if they were able to prove that any of the money from that Rumble contract was used to purchase any of these assets, they might get those assets back. So they, they will get a chance for that. Right to Suzanne's question earlier, like how do these guys still have fans? Because they're great at at making themselves look like the victims. They're great at making themselves look like they're the ones uh, that the Matrix is after. Romania is after them. Everybody's lying to try to bring them down because they're teaching young men how to be men or whatever excuse they're bringing you know bringing up that day. Um, you know they're the victims. And they're really good. They're really good. And if you didn't know better. You might say, well, God, that's a terrible thing for DCOT to take his father's watch. And I might have said the same thing. But because we have that information and we see the watch list, and there's not a Casio watch on it. Uh, so you can look at him and say, okay, well, you're, you're lying again. And it's fair to say, because we have a lot of documents uh, from the Bucharest court, it's fair to say that nearly everything these guys have said about their case publicly is not true, which is bizarre. Just entirely bizarre. I wish they would just shut their mouth and just say, we've been accused of some terrible crimes. We're going to prove our innocence in court. Um, we appreciate your support during this time. Please respect our privacy. And then no, we, and nobody would be having these spaces. Nobody would be trying to dig through their documents. They would let the, you know, the court figure it out. But because they've attacked their victims, because they've slandered their victims, because they've sent troll armies all over the internet to attack people, because they've sent one of the victims in hiding, because they've lied non-stop about what the case is actually about they're telling people it's well depends on when you ask them first it was for stealing tiktok money then it was for helping people go viral on tiktok and now it's simply because decot wants their assets and they're trying to take them down because they're inspiring young men so they keep changing the story the good thing about the truth is is you don't have to change the story the truth is the truth but when you're lying you have to continually remember the last lie that you told. All right. Uh, so I just brought some speakers up. If you want to speak, go ahead and put your hand up. Um, Freni? Fen Feniro? How do you pronounce your name, man? What, what is this? Fenrir. Fenrir. My or, apologies, Or man. you can just Fenrir. call me Fen for short. That's Fen, what okay. my friends do. All right, Fen. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So one of the things about them putting their cars in other people's names, I've noticed it's actually a tactic like used for like, uh, I would say, uh, fraud usually somebody would make a swiss bank account in like a parent's or a friend's name to kind of hide their money so i think that's what they were using the cars that they were uh uh gifting to their friends quote unquote yeah uh which i think is a very common tactic used for like you know why for like fraud and stuff 
Oh yeah, absolutely. And, and that's what they're being accused of. Uh, there's chat messages between the dealer. Uh, and, and just to give you an idea how, you know, DCOT is operating here, they've got chat messages between uh, some of the guys they bought the cars for and the actual dealer. And let me, uh, car dealer, let me try to find that. To where he says, uh, very clearly here, he says, um, so one of the guys that has the car, he's having a conversation with the dealer. And then the security guard says um, uh, that we'll buy this one in my name. That I know, but for the others, you did the same. Invoice in their name. And he paid, saying that it was the Tates that paid. And the car dealer says, exactly, exactly, exactly. And with Andrew, if I'm not, or Andrew, if I'm not mistaken, that's the name of the guy who got the Evo. Um, Alex, sorry, he says. So with Alex, yes, it's the same situation with both of them. There are two, yes, one Ferrari and one Evo. Then Alexandru says, the car is mine, but it's not mine. So they have this entire conversation where they're talking about, like, I'm getting the car, but it's not mine. So they're going to end up, you know, that's part of the additional money laundering on top of the larger money laundering offense that they have. Yeah. You know, for people who are criminals, they are probably some of the worst that I've ever seen. Literally no subtlety, self-snitching and all that sort of stuff. And like, you know, people have seen these games be played so many times with other people and it never pans out. No, you're right. You're you're 100 percent right. Yeah. And the, the crazy thing is this. So they got they already got pinned up on a first case. Right. They everything on the first case, they got all their chat messages. There were wiretaps, all of it. And these guys and again, this goes back to their level of narcissism. They thought they could commit more crimes while they were under surveillance. Like, well, we can commit more crimes and we're going to get away with it. And then they got caught again. Like, <laughs> I, I, I have difficulty wrapping my head around the level of narcissism and just ignorance. These guys have to be the dumbest criminals in our lifetime. Uh, I also want to bring back a subject about them trying to flee the state before they're convicted. There have been several times where they already have tried to flee. Uh, one of the times, uh, pretty much, uh, what was his name? Aiden Ross pretty much rat him out on his own stream, which ended up with them having to go back to the courts and stuff. So they have already attempted to flee, but DCOT and the, uh, who, and the police, whoever in charge, were able to nip that in the bud before they could do anything. Yeah. Yeah, they already caught him. They already caught him once. Um, Aiden put that out. DCOT says in the first indictment, well, it was previous documents before the indictment that while they were in jail the first time under preventive detention, that they were planning an escape at that time. So yeah, I won't be surprised if these guys make a run for it. Yeah. I just want to say, I think the yeah. agent text was bait that if they broadcast that it would provoke any authorities to come forward. It's yeah. like, it's like they're playing poker with different law agencies. Yeah, yeah, that's actually we talked about that um off you know privately, and I think there's a good possibility that that happened. So the whole Aiden Ross thing, it came into play at the same time that they would have found out that the UK was going to request extradition for human trafficking and rape. Now in the UK, those are life sentences if they're convicted, uh, maximum they could get life sentences for that. Where if they're in Romania, there's still a good chance that you know corruption could help them wiggle out of that situation so it all came at the same time they would have found out that the uk is requesting that extradition then aiden says this the brothers get picked up and arrested and then boom here comes the extradition request i mean and it all came at the same time so it's highly possible i, I agree with thoughts that they're you know they're playing a game of chess here trying to get ahead of something because they don't want to go to the uk because if they go to the uk there's a really good chance that they're convicted, they're going to prison for life. So it just makes sense from a strategical point of view to take your chances in Romania first, where they can at least live under judicial control or at least live under house arrest. And they, they're going to be able to drag this out in Romania for a very, very long time. But if they're in the UK, they're not going to be able to drag it out. And if they're convicted, good chance they're going away for life. So from a strategic point of view, it makes total sense that they would have used that as bait. Um, but that's, that's how these guys roll. They continue to get in front of, like anytime there's really big news coming that's bad, they get in front of it. They get in front of it with some false story. And then that false story becomes the narrative. They've done this the entire time over and over and over again. For example, 
when the so they're suing one of their victims. Well, they tried suing two of the victims in the U.S., which is bizarre. So the crime happened in Romania. The brothers were charged with human trafficking in Romania, but they're trying to sue two of the victims from the Romanian case. Um, they tried to do it in Romania, but the Romanian judge threw it out. So then they took it to the U.S. because one of the victims sent text messages from from Romania to her parents in the United States and said that these guys were trafficking. So that's how they're trying to justify jurisdiction in the United States is because text messages were sent from Romania to the U.S. So they sued two victims and they sued the American victim's parents and a U.S. Marine uh, that, that was all involved in that scenario. Everyone got dismissed except for the one American victim. And all of the claims were dismissed except for three. And what the judge said was, the judge said that the Tates had provided enough accusations, not evidence, enough accusations that he would permit it to move to discovery so that evidence could come out and be shared for both sides, right? It's just like, there's, there's, enough, there's enough accusations to where it can move to discovery. So the Tates immediately got in front of that. And went on this huge blitz, and both of them is everywhere that would hear them said the American judge ruled that the two victims lied to the Romanian authorities. That that was a story they came out with. That didn't even happen. It hasn't there hasn't even been a trial. The judge just approved to go to discovery. The Tates and even their own lawyer, they all went on this uh, this PR move saying that the judge ruled that the two girls were caught lying. And that became the story. That became the story. I'm still seeing people to this day saying, oh yeah, the American girl was proven in U.S. court that she was lying. But that's what they do. They get in front of everything. When they found out that they were going to, um, about when they originally found out about this uh, the extradition treaty, or the treaty, sorry, the extradition to the U.K. for human trafficking and rape, they didn't say, oh, there's these new victims that popped up and this is a new case. No, 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 no. What they did was they sent a false press release. Their PR person sent a false press release to the media telling the media that this is an old case that's being dug up that was already closed from years ago. And guess what? That's the story that the media ran with. And that became the story. But that's not true. These are three, three that we know of. New victims, new charges that have nothing to do with the four women who are alleging that Andrew raped them. Totally different victims, totally different case. And we know this. We immediately found that out because the law firm that's representing the four victims for rape that are alleging that Andrew raped them, they made a statement and said that they, those are different women. We're not associated with them. This is a completely different case. Um, but because they got ahead of it, and they put out the false press release. They lot. Imagine they are sending out false press releases to the media, and the media is running uh, these false stories. That's how they're controlling the narrative. They're shameless, absolutely shameless. So back to Suzanne's original question: Why do they still have fans? Because they're manipulating the media at at scale, and doing an incredible job. All right. I'm going to move through the the hands here. So we're going to go to TC. It was just a quick thing. Um, you was on about, you know, their lawyers and all that type of stuff. I don't know if you didn't see on Twitter, um, obviously, the, you know, being accused of, um, you know, raping a 15-year-old. And the lawyer replied in the comments with loads of laughing emojis. Yes. And I, I, for even if you think he's innocent, okay, you're a lawyer. How can you even, if that's a statement, how can you put laughing emojis under somebody being raped? I don't understand that type of logic. If you want to be seen as a professional lawyer or that Andrew Tate's innocent, I'd, like for me, it just seems really disgusting and distasteful. I don't know. But yeah, I just wanted to bring I up I believe such lawyer. actions would actually would probably get a lawyer's license either dispend, suspended or probably even disbarred, depending on where they're at. He's in America. Yeah. He's in the United States. Yeah, he laughed. Uh, yeah, for those man. of you who don't know, he um, TC is talking about there was a retweet of uh, the BBC did a documentary and they did a, an article talking about the women who had been raped. And it was a, it was a tweet about, you know, these women were alleging that he raped them and, and choked them, whatever it was. And Andrew's U S lawyer went underneath that and just did an entire row 
of laughing emojis. He was laughing uh, at the women who had been um, claiming that they've been raped as a lawyer. Like that's he's he's that's a disgrace to the profession. You know, it's one thing to represent your clients and say, you know, we're defending our clients, blah 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 blah. But to laugh, to 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 publicly laugh on social he media. Also, um, that's disgusting. Yeah, sorry. He also he also said on a podcast as well. He said that even if you think all of the things that Andrew Tate's been accused is true, he's done a lot of good in the world anyway. So surely that repairs everything. And yeah. that, like, how laughable is that to say? Yeah, my client might have you know raped all these women, you know, sixty women or whatever. But you know, he, he's done some donations, man. Yeah, he would have definitely <laughs> defended Pablo Escobar back then. Uh, he yeah. would have defended Hitler. Apparently, yes. McBride also defended Ali Alexander, who was a known associate of Fuentes and also a PEDO. And he was also part of Keith Raniere's appeal team. So Keith Raniere was another human trafficker who was convicted, and Joseph McBride, Andrew's lawyer, was part of his team for the appeal. Uh, Anthony, go ahead. Thanks for being patient. I, I do genuinely fear that the Romanians are going to botch this up. They might. They have a track record. They might, but I will say this. Um, authorities in any country have the possibility of botching things, but the first case has passed with flying colors through the preliminary chamber, which is pretrial, and the pretrial judge approved all of the evidence and rejected 100% of Tate's claims as unfounded. And it ordered the trial. So up to that point, that that case is good to go. Now they appealed it, and the court of appeal is now going to hear their complaints. But this isn't a situation where, I mean, it's going to take a significant amount of procedural errors to get the case thrown out at this stage. Some procedural errors that, for some reason, the first judge didn't didn't catch for whatever reason. But what they're trying to do is they're trying to get certain pieces of evidence removed. They're, they're trying to get the original statements that the Tate brothers made to the authorities back when they were raided originally. They're trying to get their own statements removed from the case. So they're trying to get specific things thrown out is what they're trying to do. The case is going to go to trial. There might be a delay The the appeals court could send it back to the preliminary chamber judge to fix some things before it goes to trial. But it's going to go to trial. Now, the second case, is the second case going to get botched? I don't know. It's it's too early to tell. But if it makes it through the preliminary chamber, then, yeah, it's going to go the distance on that one. The, then it come, the question then comes down to, um, will there be a conviction? I don't see a scenario in where these guys are going to beat all of these charges. Yeah, they might beat um, forming an organized criminal group. Maybe he'll beat rape. Maybe, maybe Tristan will beat incitement to violence. Maybe, maybe... You know, if they're lucky, they'll beat money laundering. I don't know. Uh, but sexual intercourse with a minor, they've got him dead to rights. You know, they got the chat messages. They get the wiretaps. They've got witnesses. Uh, trafficking in minors, dead to rights. They've got her content from when she was working on webcam as a minor. They've got uh, witnesses. They've got chat messages. They've got her identification. Dead to rights. Done. Uh, tr human trafficking. There's 35 victims in the second case and seven in the first case, with possibly 12 more being added in the second case. There's no scenario in where they're going to beat all of that. It's just not going to happen. That's statistically not going to happen. It's, there's no way they're going to beat all of that and say, well, uh, you know, here's 40 something victims and, you know, you didn't traffic any of them because they have very detailed information how these girls were recruited, how they were deceived, how they were transported, how they were sheltered, and how they were exploited in various ways. It checks all of the boxes for human trafficking for all of them. Wouldn't they also be charged for distribution of CP as well since they had a minor work on their CAM website? Possibly, yeah, possibly. These are just the charges that we know about between now and the time the indictment comes, there could be more charges added and that could be one of them. Um, I will say this what? really quick. Uh, I, I don't agree with you completely, Anthony, because we've done a lot of deep diving into similar cases and people who've been charged with human trafficking, et cetera, in Romania. And you would be surprised at how many people either did not get any preventive measure whatsoever or they were only given judicial control and then they were later convicted. 
So I, I don't think it's a situation of their popularity or their wealth that is keeping them out of jail. I think it's just the circumstances and they have, they have great lawyers that are able to just keep it a little bit more relaxed than it probably should be. But, you know, there was one case that I posted previously. There was a, and again, I, I don't have it in front of me. So if, if I botch this a little bit, don't call me on it because I don't have it pulled up. There was, I believe it was a woman who was convicted of trafficking minors. And I think she was just under judicial control uh, the entire time. And, I, and she was convicted. She was later convicted. I think it was, she was trafficking minors. Um, I, I posted that on my timeline. So it, it was just, she didn't, she didn't go into jail or anything like that. And she was trafficking minors, like really young girls. Uh, and she was convicted, but they kept her under judicial control. So uh, Romania's system is strange. I, I don't agree with everything that they're doing, but it's really weird. And it, from an outsider looking in, looking at all the cases that we've looked at, the fact that they're under preventive measures to begin with is a big deal. It gets, it gets blown off. People say, oh, yeah, well, it's just house arrest. It's actually a pretty big deal that they're under house arrest. It's a big deal that they're restricted to Romania. They've made it look like it's not a big deal. And because you see them out, they're still driving their cars, they're going to dinners, they're doing all the things. So they, you know, they make you think it's not a big deal. But when you look at similar cases, it's actually a really big deal that they're being restricted to Romania, that they're, you know, that they're under house arrest or they're under judicial control uh, to begin with. And I, and I think a lot of us are just disappointed that they're not in some sort of detention especially when it comes to the minors. We are going next to Fanny. Thanks for your patience. Hi, murder tots, everyone. Um, two questions, quickly. Are they, if they're under house arrest, are they not tagged? I, I kind of feel like they're not, because that might have been mentioned before now. And then the other question I would have is, if they are convicted in Romania, what what happens then to the, the UK cases? Because surely then, what, are they going to, they, would they be imprisoned in Romania? Would they then go to the UK to be tried immediately for the things that they're accused of? Because otherwise you'd get a problem, wouldn't you, of... of um, what do you call it when things run out of time cases it becomes too far away from the incident i can't think of the Sta name for Sta it. statute of limitations you call it statute of limitations yeah, yeah, yeah. I think another name. so that's yeah. my those are my questions I'm yeah those are, those are great questions uh regarding ankle bracelets which i believe is what your question is so currently andrew's under house arrest for at least 30 days we're going to find out monday if it's going to be extended another 30 days and Tristan is under judicial control, which is, it's like bail. It's like bail, but without the financial requirements. Um, Romania said that starting in October of this year, they're going to start putting ankle bracelets on everyone that's under uh, preventive measures, house arrest, judicial control. Does that mean the Tate brothers are going to get them? I don't know. But I know Romania said they're going to start rolling it out in October. My guess is the brothers' lawyers, they have an entire legal team there. From what I understand, it's quite a good legal team. Um, I have no doubt that they are going to come up with a million and one reasons why the brothers cannot wear an ankle bracelet. Maybe it's going to mess up their fitness routines. I don't know. They're going to come up with something. Um, so will the brothers actually get an ankle bracelet? I don't know, but I know a lot of people are about to get one. To your second question, I don't believe there's a statute of limitations when it comes to like, human trafficking uh, in rape. Uh, what's going to happen if they're convicted in Romania? Actually, it doesn't matter what the outcome is in Romania. If they're uh, by some freak chance, by a miracle, by God herself, if they are acquitted of all charges in Romania, all charges acquitted, they immediately get arrested and extradited to the UK. Or if they're convicted and they're sentenced to prison, when their prison sentence ends, they also get arrested again, immediately get arrested, and they get extradited to the UK. So no matter what happens in Romania, they get extradited to the UK unless they flee. So the only way they're not going to the UK uh, is if they flee. Unless, unless something happens, you know, let's just say theoretically, uh, they get 10 or 15 years in Romanian prison. A lot can happen in that time. So, you know, there could be a technicality, not where statute of limitations, but something could happen and then UK could end up. I, I just saw that the UK is choosing not to prosecute Harvey Weinstein 
uh, for one of the cases now. So there could be some technicality in the future, but I don't I don't think it's going to be to a statute of limitations. Um, but th yeah, those are great questions. So Southern FFA family, uh, you go, and then after you, we're going to go to Shy. Thanks, Fran. So I've been following you for a while because Anthony sends me you my stuff. How many victims are there in total? <laughs> okay, not including the the 12, 12 to 13, 14 new ones that we came across. Uh, there's currently 49 victims across all of the cases, criminal and civil, for both the brothers. However, uh, we found at the in this document that there are at least 12, 12 to 14 additional victims that are currently being investigated. And if they are added to the file as actual victims or, or witnesses, depending on the classification, that's going to raise the number to 61. And that's going to include the first remaining case, the second remaining case, the UK criminal case for rape and human trafficking, and the UK civil case where four women are accusing Andrew of rape. So 61, if those 12 are added, 12 to 14, it could be a little bit more. If not, uh, then we're currently staying in at 49. That's what I mean. There's no scenario here where you're going to have this many uh, women who have been exploited or harmed in some way, and you're just going to walk away from all of these charges. That's, that's not going to happen. Somewhere on some of these charges in one of these countries, they, they will be convicted. There's too many. There's too many, and the stories are too similar. So unless there's a unless law enforcement completely botches all of this in every country, which which isn't going to happen, um, yeah, these guys will go to prison somewhere. And I see Tate News. Yeah, I, I want to give a shout out to someone. I see Tate News down here in the in the audience, and I want to give credit where credit is due. Uh, Tate News and I, we we started off uh, kind of going at each other, but I want to say this guy is doing phenomenal coverage of the second case. So uh, he's in the audience right now, uh, and he's on top of it. I've been, I'm really busy uh, this month, but he's doing a fantastic job. So follow him. He's Tate News down in the, and I can't even believe those words are coming out of my mouth, but that's how good of a job he's doing at covering this second case. Uh, go follow him if you want to keep up on the case. He's breaking this stuff faster uh, than probably anybody right now. And he's doing a fantastic job of doing it. So I'm going to give credit where credit is due. Good job, dude. Um, Shy, you've had your hand up patiently. Thank you. Hi, thanks, Crayon. Hi, Thoughts. Hello, the room. Thanks for the room. Gives us a chance to talk about it. Um, I've been hearing quite a few things, but I am, I am aware that, that the amount of money they've had is one of the reasons that they're able to play with the justice system anywhere, to be honest. And their aim, and you can see them doing it. It's it's a a method that uh, these sorts of criminals use. It's called fair gaming, or other people call it fuck it forward. But th th they fair game everyone. They fair game the victims, they fair game the judicial system, the judges, the everyone. And the idea is, is they just get unscrupulous lawyers that will put giggles under posts and things like that. And they'll just keep on going at all of the people involved in the case in the hope that that will stand them down. They um, are wrong this time, this time round. As soon as they stop being any kind of money, everyone that they're backing them are going to run away. And there are too many victims now. Their money won't survive it, is my opinion. Sorry, thank you. And look, I did, I did have one question. Um, when they – look, when they get um, – when things are decided over there, how far away is that? It just seems to be, I know they can drag it on a long time with various appeals for this, that and the other, but they, they've been found responsible for something, yes or no? Well, look at it this way. The first case, they were indicted right. in June of, June of 2023. It is now yeah. September 2024. And only next month is the Court of Appeal going to hear uh, why the Tate brothers don't think they should go to trial. Oh, good Lord. Right. Okay. So that they, yeah, sense. they're going to drag this out. They're going to use every method they can to drag this out as long as possible. One, because they can. Yes. They can, right? I mean, th listen, they live in a big compound. They got a swimming pool. They're allowed to have guests. They can go out and they're, well, they don't have any cars at the moment, but they'll get new ones if they don't have any already. They can yeah. go around and travel around Romania once Andrew gets off house arrest. They can live pretty good lives as is. But if they go to the UK, right, if, they, if, if the UK gets their track, they're probably going to prison there. Or yes. if they go to trial in Romania, once the trial starts, 
then there's no stopping that. And that's going to end in a conviction as well for some of this stuff. So they're going to drag this out and use every possible trick that they can, legal loophole that they can to stop these from going to trial. It's going to be one of those very slow, watching them go down slowly. Their followers, people are worried about them, but slowly but surely they will become disenfranchised, disenchanted, and they will stand away. We've seen it happen many times before, and um, thank you, because I do follow you to keep an eye on how things are going. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for coming up, Shai. I always appreciate it when you come in. Um, TC, you've had your hand up. Go ahead. I was just thinking then, it's like, well, it's a pretty short question to you, really. It's like all of these podcasters and everyone who's had him on, everybody who supported him, but they've all denied all of these allegations. At what point do you think they're going to sit, sit down and actually think, there's actually a good chance this has actually happened now? Is that, you know what I mean? And may, Do you think they'll even let the, drop their ego and pride to you know, even say it could be true? Do you know what I mean? I think we're going to see some really weird things happen if it comes into... I mean, what, they're going to get convicted of something somewhere. And everyone who's platformed them and helped push their lie about what's happening with the case. Oh, we're being falsely accused. The Romanian prosecutors are making up store, whatever. Everyone who's helped push that, they're going to have some really difficult decisions to make when there's a conviction. Like Piers Morgan. Yeah. Pier- yeah. Yeah. Patrick, Bet yeah. David, uh, Tucker Carlson, Candace Owens, all of them. They're going to have to make that decision to where either they're going to address it or they're going to have to say we were wrong. I don't yeah. know. I don't know what they're going to choose. Um, yeah, it's I think like, um, sorry. It's um. Do you know who True Jordy is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he <laughs> he's obviously had a history of Andrew Tate, and funny enough, he got cancelled because of his dislike towards Andrew Tate, and he made a jerk, and he got cancelled. He's basically lost many of his businesses and all that type of stuff. But it's funny now. Everybody who attacked him for being this bad person, they're defending Andrew Tate. You know, the very same people who was condemning True Jordy. And True Jordy's been speaking out on Drew Tate the most, yet nobody's, you know what I mean? No, every, no, nobody's, you know, giving him um, props for doing it. Like being the only YouTuber, even though he got cancelled, he's still speaking out against them. Yeah. Or even, get, or even getting the victim's lawyer on a bloody podcast. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I, I think it's fair to say, I don't think anyone here has a problem with these guys being interviewed. You know, people went to prison and they interviewed Charles Manson. They interviewed people on death row and people who have committed heinous crimes. That's not the problem. Interviewing these guys has never been the problem. The problem comes when they allow them to push a false narrative about what's happening or smearing their victims. That, you know, that's where the line gets drawn. Yeah, go up there, plead your innocence. That's fine. But when you start smearing the victims and telling lies and trying to deceive people to push this false narrative about what's actually happened to you, that's the problem. Yeah. It was um George Jenko. He had a massive podcast with him, oh. and it's, it kick-started his whole success. And afterwards, he said, "God gave me this opportunity to interview Andrew Tate." And inside that interview on the podcast, he questions Andrew. He was like, "Oh yeah, what? How comes all of this happened to you?" And Andrew said, uh, "Because I told two of my friends to how to get big on TikTok." And then George replied, saying, "That's why you got. Um, that's why this is all happened to you." And Right, you can have a conversation with someone, but if you don't do the research or challenge someone when they say that, when you have a podcast with 10 million views, yeah. it's so damaging. So it's, it's to the actual victims as well, because they would get they're getting told all the time that they're not even real, and then they have a podcast where you can spit this out, and everyone in the comments is praising it. Um, I think it's honestly just because for someone who says that he's a you know a man of God and all that type of stuff to let someone on and not challenge them properly i think it's completely out of order but yeah sorry <laughs> i agree i agree 100 uh, you know if you are going to interview them and you are going to allow them to push that narrative and smear the victims at least push back just give a little bit of pushback the wildest one with candace owens and, and tucker carlson where tucker sat right in front of andrew at the time who had been charged with rape and human trafficking and says so you haven't been charged with a sex crime and andrew says nope and Tucker goes, yeah, because people can look this up. And I'm just like, what? <laughs> like he's literally been charged with rape. He had been charged with rape and human trafficking. Yeah, those are sex crimes. Uh, and Candace Owens, who has just bent over backwards trying to defend this guy to the point, she made an entire video where she attacked one of the victims, essentially two of the victims, but focused more on the one victim, attacked her 
and attacked her based on her past, attacked her based on her past and things that happened to her when she was a minor. So this, one of the victims that the Tates are suing in the U.S., uh, that they brought over to uh, Romania, et cetera, they're suing her in the U.S. When she was underage, when she was like 15, 16 years old, she was sexually abused by multiple men, by multiple men. One of the men, his name is Keith Fox. You can look it up yourself. You can go to Google and type in Yoga Fox Convicted. Y-O-G-A, Yoga Fox, that was his nickname. Yoga Fox Convicted. You can go look this up for yourself. He was, I think he was 56 years old, 57 years old, and he was raping her as a 15-year-old. Okay? Now, Candace brings this up in a video that she made specifically for this victim. And she said, she said, uh, because she was basically saying that this predator had been falsely accused by her as a minor. However, he was caught. Her, the, the victim's mother hired a private investigator and took photos of him molesting her, took photos of him molesting her and provided them to the police. And the same predator did it to another minor. And Candace went on and made an entire video and said that she wasn't going to, this is, it's still online. She says that she's not going to name him because there was a minor involved. And then she said the minor's name over and over and over and over again. I think she said the minor's name like a hundred and something times, but then she said she wouldn't say his name because there was a minor involved. And they bleeped out his name every single time she said his name. His name is Keith Fox, AKA Yoga Fox. You can look it up for yourself. He was convicted. He lost his appeal. He did it to two minors. She was one of them. And Candace Owens made an entire video trying to defend him, saying that he was falsely accused by her. So I, you know, I, you know, we know that Candace Owens' husband, George Farmer, is a friend of Tate's. That's why she's doing it. But you know, these people are going to have some really difficult decisions to make um, if these guys get convicted. I mean, look, there's 49 victims right now across all the cases, and these other 12 are added. There's going to be 61. There's no scenario in where this is fabricated. So these people are going to have some really difficult decisions to make. Patrick, Beth, David, Candace Owens, Tucker Carlson, George. I, I can't even, I don't remember his last name that you just brought up. Um, all of them. There's a whole, yeah, yep, him. It'll be interesting to see. I'm, I'm looking forward to watching them all squirm. I don't think they will. Some of them might just stick by the wire and just say that as a matrix attack for the whole time. Some you know what I mean? Will, yeah. Just like put a head yeah. in the sun. Do you know what I mean? And in that way, they keep because if they admit it, then all the people who was their fans, then they're like, oh wait, oh no, it actually was an illusion. But if they just keep on keeping this illusion, they'll keep that fan there. So I don't even know if they will admit it. To be honest, actually thinking about it now, I've already seen some fans say that if they're convicted, that only proves that a that it's a matrix attack. Like make that make sense. If they're convicted, it only proves that it's a matrix attack because these yeah. guys, it's in, it's not possible that these guys can commit crime. Uh, uh, Rosa, go ahead. Hi. Yeah. Um, so about the interviews, what I really can't stand is when he's allowed to just go on about TikTok. When we're talking about TikTok here, we're talking about webcams, we're talking about sex work online. And nobody goes, nobody says, presses them on that and says, just TikTok or is it OnlyFans and uh, web, uh, other webcam sites? Nobody questions and pushes them on that. They just allow him to just blatantly lie by omission by just, you know, cutting out the TikTok bit. And then there's the other thing, other questions that I would, I would be dying to ask him, like, what's with the tattoos? <laughs> like, what is with tattooing these women? Um, like. That is again. That's just more evidence of how you how you perceive these women, and and how controlled you have these women too. Because let's get this straight. So he tells his fans that there is the Matrix out there, and everything that the Matrix uh, says is wrong. So now we can't we they can't trust any kind of um, justice um, for them because. You know, it's all a big lie, um, a, a, a according to the Tates. So then, nothing like the, this is nothing new. There's been constant um, cults and communities and people that 
are so charismatic like Andrew Tate who can ignite people and especially just pick out vulnerable people almost by just looking at them. But that's what Andrew Tate's just done is he's just moved it into the digital world. So it is just a digital cult. And I honestly, like the more videos that you, that they watch, the more brainwashed they will be become. And there'll be no, they can't tell them any truth because it is, it's clear brainwashing on young boys. And it's just, Imagine being a 15-year-old girl, 16, 17, 18, 19-year-old girl and coming up against Andrew Tate or Tristan Tate. You are absolutely powerless. It would be terrifying. And I can't see how people are just not not, not coming, coming to those conclusions themselves. Like, if they were real men, they wouldn't want to, the company of young boys and young girls. They would have nothing in common with them. You mentioned the tattoos, and while you were speaking, I looked this up. So there's a, a man by the name of Iggy Simmelweis. Iggy is Andrew's mm-hmm. right-hand man, and he deleted his Twitter account um, after he was making some anti-Palestinian comments early on, and he got taken to task for it because he is friends with Andrew and helps Andrew run his business. Uh, he just he just disappeared off of social media. But he also runs the War Room, which is an, one of Andrew's paid uh, groups. And they had chat rooms in there where they would teach guys how to manipulate women, how to exploit women in the sex industry. And I, I'm going to read a, something that Iggy said inside where he was teaching them how, how they do things. He says, um, and after that, it becomes a series of gradual steps to remove her entire support structure from her life. Then we punish her for transgressions, real or imagined, by having her get our name tattooed on her, leaving her family's home, apartment, town, or country, webcaming or stripping and walking the tracks for us, getting us girls. That's what they taught in the war room. They taught the method inside the war room for breaking the women down, stripping them of their entire support structure so they're dependent on the men then they would either they would make up these scenarios or find a scenario and have her prove her loyalty by getting their names tattooed on them. And they would continue to break her down, get her away from her family, get her isolated to where she would work on webcam, stripping or walking the tracks, walking the tracks, which means acting as a bottom bitch to bring in more girls. That's what they taught in the war room. So when you have, you know, hey, why are these guys getting in trouble? Because this is the shit that they were teaching inside of the war room. And it's no coincidence that multiple students of Andrews have also been charged with human trafficking. Now, we have a Tate fan here. I'm assuming he's a Tate fan because he's been blasting us with thumbs down. Anthony, what's on your mind, man? How you doing? No, it's good. You're right. What's happening, man? What's on your mind? Like, this is like it just feels like a guardian of Tate haters. Guys actually like hate Tate for no reason. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it feels kind of weird, isn't it? So holding so, people accountable is hate to you? I'm just going to ask that question. Okay, so, so okay, so what's your point? Because um, what you guys are saying bad things about the war room. The war room is basically teaching guys how to like make money and become more manly and like be better people in general, like, how to treat women better. So I don't know what you guys are even talking about in the first place, because none of you are even in the war room to even speak of. Tate teaches guys young men how to be men not soft pussies in this generation most guys in this fucking generation are fucking soft weak useless in general just fucking weak that's why most people having breakups their women are leading them that's the problem that's what he's fighting against you say that men are weak and all that type of stuff so you know the best way to make money so you know like be a grafter you know all that type of stuff you know provide for yourself innit? Would you agree? Being a grafter yeah, yeah, that's being a man. Not anyway. um, not getting women to go on camera for you to make money and then not go on a keyboard and start sexing the men. Children, yeah. <laughs> if you want to make money, there's plenty of ways to make money where you can actually help people in this world. So not so an- so Anthony, I'd like to have a conversation them. with you, man. Let's just have yeah, a, yeah. A, a, yeah. I, I listened to you speak. You said your piece. Don't hear me out here. Do you not? May I ask how old you are? Ballpark. I'm old enough over 20 yeah i think so okay do you you have a okay my question is do you see a problem with a man who's almost 40 years old raping a 15 year old girl in the ass repeatedly while choking her unconscious do you think that's a problem or you think 
you think that's just because we hate Tate? Do you have an? Do you think we have? A, you have like, do you have yeah, a video do. of that? Once they, you can show me a video, then you can't talk shit. So that Anthony, high, yeah, let me I, explain I to you. I agree with that. That is highly illegal. But you guys can't yeah, say. Yeah. So let me you explain to you. Don't talk about anything without giving me a video. Okay, Anthony. You spoke. Let me explain something to you. Most crimes do not get captured on video, especially sex crimes. And you're asking for evidence of child pornography is what you're asking for here in a space. So that's not going to happen. But the evidence that they do have is they have witnesses. They have wiretaps where the authorities wiretapped her phone. They also have chat messages that came directly off her devices between her and Andrew. So there's significant evidence that this actually happened. You're not going to get a video. You're not going to get a video of somebody being human trafficked. You're not going to get a video, in most cases, of somebody being murdered. You're not going to get a video of somebody being raped. Most people get convicted without videos. If you don't have an understanding of what evidence is in a court of law, then I can see that's why you're confused here. But evidence in a court of law can be wiretaps. It can be chat messages. It can be data extracted from a computer. It can be video. It can be witnesses. It can be victim statements. There's all sorts of different things. It can be financial records. You don't have to have a video to prove that a crime actually committed so or was committed. So when you're asking, the, well, I want to see a video of this or it didn't happen, that's not how crimes are prosecuted. If there was a video, that would be added as evidence and that would be slam dunk. But in a court of law, wiretaps and chat messages and witnesses are just as good as video. That's how things get prosecuted. And they don't look at one piece of information or one piece of evidence. So it's not a situation where the victim says, I was raped. Okay. They're going to look at multiple pieces of evidence that confirm or corroborate that evidence. So if the victim says, This happens to me, then they're going to go out and they're going to find additional evidence to confirm what she says. And that evidence might come in the form of, Did anyone else see it happen? Okay. Well, they said that they saw it happen. Do we have any other evidence? Okay, well, we have chat messages between her and Andrew off of her phone, and it came off of Andrew's phone as well. Is there anything else? Yes, we wiretapped her phone and heard her having conversations with people talking about this. So they look for different pieces of evidence in order to prosecute people for any crime, not just this. So if you're under the illusion that he's being falsely accused, and in case you don't know, Across all of his cases, Anthony, there are 49 victims currently between all of his cases, 49 victims spread out across multiple countries, and most of them are for human trafficking. And if you're under the illusion that this is some sort of a matrix attack or he's being falsely accused or people don't like him because they're jealous or we're Tate haters, you need to rethink what, what you understand about what's actually happening here because you don't have the real understanding. If you're getting all of your information from the Tate brothers or from people like Censored Man or Suleiman Ahmed or the entire PR network from the Tate brothers, you're getting wrong information. You're getting wrong information about the case. Now, I, I said my piece. I'm sure you have something to say. And by the way, you don't have to attack uh, how modern men are and the pussies and all of that stuff because I guarantee you this. Whatever level of pussies you think modern men is, those pussies are not going to prison for 20 years for human trafficking. So I would rather be a pussy and have my freedom than be raped by other men in prison in Romania for 20 years until my asshole falls out. So you want to, you know, we might be a pussy, right? I might be a pussy, but I'm not going to get used as a pussy in prison, right? I'm not going to have my ass pussy used in prison for 20 years. So let's make that distinction here. If you have something to... Real men care about women. Yeah. <laughs> they care about women, the plight of women. They know how vulnerable women naturally are and they protect them. Now, I know he goes on about protecting women now, but he certainly wasn't in the past. Yeah. Pax, go ahead. I would like to add uh, that uh, uh, actually uh, we have uh, uh, in, in the court documents, uh, we have uh, uh, the fact that uh, the 15 years old victim uh, gave statements to the uh, die court. So uh, it's not just uh, uh, their uh, intercepted uh, conversation. And also we have the, uh, the victim uh, statement. And also uh, uh, not to forget that uh, the, the, the Prosecutors know that uh, uh, Andrew Tate rented an apartment for that 15 years old girl. 
Why do uh, 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 almost 40 years old men will rent an apartment for a 15 years uh, girl? So uh, there are so many pieces, uh, so many pieces of evidence which are corroborating each other. I don't, for uh, for real, I don't see that this uh, this 15 years old victim which will uh, which will not uh, end that into a sentence uh, and also uh, for that 17 years old which was uh, uh, trafficked to, to do webcam also that one i don't see that uh, it will not uh, get a, con uh, a conviction for this for these two victims uh, minor victims definitely he will get a conviction uh, anthony go ahead yeah, thank you. Um, I'm not. If, I'm not even calling you guys pussies. You know, I'm not. I'm not talking about you guys in general. I'm just talking about men, not you guys. Just to, like make that point clear. And yeah, why right don't? Why is it? Yeah, why right don't? Listen, let, let me let me say this really quick. I agree that there's a lot of young men out there that are struggling with masculinity today. I, I think everyone in here can agree with that. Yeah, yeah. Anthony, I agree with you about taking responsibility. You just said if you're soft, it's your own fault. Take responsibility, right? Yeah, yeah. Right? Okay. So wouldn't you say that that also applies to the Tate brothers right now? They're being charged and accused of heinous crimes all over the world with 49 victims and counting. Don't you think that they should take responsibility? I don't think it makes sense because they didn't have a case until they become famous, until they started reaching younger men, until they started reaching the generation that the government and the people in charge won't actually wanted to control. But they did. That's when they, they started did that. Just didn't know about it. At first, they, they were just regular guys until they became famous. Then you start hearing these different cases from east, west, north, south. That doesn't even make sense. Like, if they were really, if they were really like doing all this illegal stuff, they would have been arrested a long time ago. They were a very long time ago. They why were. Like, so here's what you don't know. Here's what you don't know, Anthony. Case. Hang on, Anthony. I need to I need to interject here for a second. What you don't know is Tate has been running from various sexual assault and rape accusations for 10 years, maybe even longer than 10 years. Um, Tristan has had a restraining order against him for hitting a woman before. Um, they've tried to prosecute Andrew multiple times for rape, and it just didn't stick. He's incredibly slippery. There's incidents going back to 2021, early 2021, where they were trafficking women uh, back then. They just didn't stick. Another one was in 2021, where one of their victims got assaulted and thrown out of the house, and she went to the police for help. So they're, they've been trying to get these guys for a very long time. But here's what happened, and this is why you're seeing everything unravel now. After they finally had enough to get them the first time, they they took all of the data off of all their computers, off of all of their phones, all of the witnesses. They took all of the data off of their phones, all the victims, and then they started putting the pieces together. And they realized that they had all of this evidence with all of these other victims and all these other financial crimes, and it all came off of their computer and their devices. That allowed the authorities to put all of these cases together. They had been missing the pieces to the puzzle for a very long time. And once they have all of this data and they start putting all of the pieces together, now they can prosecute them at scale. That's what you're seeing right now. So when you're gonna see the US, they're gonna step up too and the US is gonna prosecute them for multiple charges. And that's also going to come from things that have been collected uh, from Romania and things that are happening from Romania. So this isn't a scenario where they're being prosecuted because they're becoming too influential of young men. They're being pre prosecuted because it took them a really long time to get enough evidence to actually pin them down for the first time ever. They've been evading justice for a very long time, especially Andrew, and it all caught up to them. Look at somebody like R. Kelly. I, you, you, uh, looking at your picture, I don't know if that's you. You might be a little bit too young to know who R. Kelly yeah, is. Yeah, I know. But, yeah, I know. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It meant that guy committed crimes for over a decade too, but they finally got him, right? They put him away for 20 or 30 years, but it took him 10 years to do it. Right. Sometimes it takes a really long time to get these people, especially when they've got money, especially when they're moving around, especially when they're slippery and they can hire legal teams to wiggle out of problems. So, again, they're not being prosecuted because they're influential. They're being prosecuted because they spent the last 10 or 15 years committing crimes and that finally caught up to them. That's why they're being prosecuted. 
Now, if you're a Tate fan, I know you're not going to agree with any of that, but I, I'll say this to you. My only request to you is this. And by the way, thank you for being respectful uh, to everyone up here. Yeah, no problem. Say, no problem. I'll say this. Just you, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll say this, man. You don't have to believe they're guilty. I don't care what you believe. I'm not trying to convince you. I just want you to be aware that there's a larger thing happening here. And the only thing I ask is this. Whatever you believe, guilty, not guilty, maybe guilty, doesn't matter. I only ask you that you don't participate in trying to smear their victims or speaking bad about the victims or even carrying on the false narrative that there are no victims. Just the brothers have rights in Romania and they're being respected. Victims also have rights. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. All right. Yeah, yeah. that's all I, I ask you, man. Just, yeah, just, I don't know if you got a little sister or not, but just imagine your little sister was one of the ones involved. Come on, man, chill. <laughs> chill. Right? Oh my right? little sister, bro. Chill, man. So right on. Okay. <laughs> All right. So Chill, we're gonna man. we're gonna we're gonna uh, move through just a couple more speakers. Um, yeah. I'm thank you add... for bringing me up. Thank you. Right on, Anthony. Have a good one, man. Appreciate you. Uh, just me. I just add you to the space uh, to the stage. Go ahead. I, I was kind of sitting in the corner, quiet, but Anthony kind of prompted me to speak a little bit. So. I just want to tell them that, first of all, that I agree with them that, yes, there are lots of good things that uh, Tate does teach, and some of his programs in the real world are beneficial in teaching technology and AI. But what you fans need to start doing is understanding that there's an entire backside to this. You have to understand that you have to separate the front to the back. And what you're learning about now is the backside of this operation. And... Um, I will tell you that, you know, I am one who feels very confident in speaking in it. I accidentally dated one of these war room guys from September of 2019 until it took me until October of 22 to get completely freed from him. And I would tell everyone here that do not doubt a single word that these girls say. Um, they are most likely speaking 100 percent the truth. My experience mirrored a lot of the things they're saying, although. I withheld from doing the webcamming, even though I was constantly pushed into it. Uh, I have fears of non-consensual porn, of course. But um, I want to say that this lover boy method and the fact that people kind of go back and forth on it um, and then, you know, talk about gold digging women and this, that and the other. What you have to understand about the war rooms lover boy method is this was just not some guys randomly lover boying girls. These were grown men with narcissistic personality disorder that got together in groups and decided very methodical, abusive, neural language programming, et cetera, et cetera, ways to work these women. I was an older woman when I got targeted. I was 48 years old and sold a typewriter to a guy in my driveway. Two and a half years later, I didn't even know my name. I've lost most of my friends. My grown children don't speak to me. And I sent my son a thousand miles away to his father's when I had this man in my home and I couldn't get him to leave. So this is very serious and I was lucky. So any stories you're hearing from these other girls, just imagine their experience was 10 times worse. And I'm telling you, I wouldn't want any of you to even go through what I went through. I don't even want to imagine what these girls went through. So I strongly suggest that you donate to the fund I posted below. Uh, these would be the four girls I call ground zero who tried to stop this role 10 years ago and were ignored. Had they been listened to, had Andrew Tate been prosecuted over their rape accusations, we wouldn't even be sitting in this room right now. We wouldn't be battling a whole wave of young men supporting a man because they don't understand what they're supporting. We wouldn't even be here. So please donate to them. I know that fund also is doing a lot of advocacy work on the side and some things like that. So any money you donate goes to like so much more than you could even imagine. So, but understand this was bad. They taught this to men. It has dominoed out. God only knows how many victims are out there and how many more victims are going to show up on the Andrew Tate list. So everybody who is here is fighting. Um, Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I had no idea the pile of shit I had stepped in. And every day I get up and it becomes more and more like some unrealistic movie that I'm in that I can't find the pause button for. So um, fight for these women. Fight to get these men locked up. They 
their their good does not outweigh their bad by any certain means. And we need to make sure that we stop their role. So Anthony, just pay attention to everything that's going on. And remember, you're in love with the front, but you need to recognize what the back's been up to. You're being played, sweetheart. I'm so sorry. God bless everyone for being here. Please donate to the fund. And thank you, Crayons. Thank you. Thank you, Jessamy. Uh, Anthony, I want, I want to mention one more thing. So you talked about the war room, um, you know, being positive for guys. I, I want to let you know, I don't know how long you've been a fan of the Tate brothers, but what the war room was before they were arrested was completely different than what it is now. They had chat rooms in there, and I've got some of those chat messages. I ha I've had war room members just... Ex, you know, export all the chats and, and send them over. Um, they they had different rooms. They had a webcam room. They had an OnlyFans room. They had a, what's called a, a PhD room for pimp and hose degree. And these guys would workshop how they could find vulnerabilities in women and how they could break these women down and how they could isolate these women and how they could try to convince and manipulate these women to work in pornography. Like they would workshop this as a group. Or, you know, you would have Andrew step by step, take screenshots of how he was communicating with the girls. And he would show these guys how he's breaking this girl down and he's making up these lies to manipulate her, to make her think that her friends back home said this or said that. And he would teach them how to break these women down to the point that he would get, that he would get the women to comply. And that's what they used to teach in the war room. Once they got arrested, they had to change everything. Everything has been completely changed now. You've their entire business has been sanitized. But prior to the arrest, the war room was completely different than it was now. Completely different. So anyway, I have to shut this space down. There's a lot of people who have requested to speak. And unfortunately, I can't continue this space. So thank you for your patience. We'll have another space. Uh, Tate, they postponed the house arrest decision till Monday. If he's kept on house arrest again, we might have another space to talk about it. I apologize if I couldn't get all of you up here to speak. Uh, but we've had this going now much longer than I expected. So thank you, everyone. Thanks for the shares. Thanks for the excellent questions and conversation. We will see you in another space.